He was named Musician of the Year at the recent National Blues Awards in Memphis, Tennessee. He has played to sold-out houses on three continents, including at Carnegie Hall and the Sydney Opera House. He is a Grammy Award winner. He's the only musician ever to have played the national anthem at the Houston Astrodome. And for his charity work, he's been made an honorary admiral in the Texas Navy. And yet once, Stevie Ray Vaughan was just another kid at home driving his parents crazy, playing the guitar all the time. And we're here today to talk to Stevie Ray Vaughan about how you go from being a kid at home driving your parents crazy to being one of the most respected musicians in the world. True or false? Did it's your parents true. say, put down that guitar and do your homework? No, they said, uh, they said maybe turn it down sometimes, you know. <laughs> when did you fall in love with the guitar? Immediately. <laughs> when did you first hear it? Uh, did you hear the Beatles on the radio when you were a kid or something? Yeah, like that? I listened to a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the radio broadcasts out of Chicago and in Nashville that were record marts and they would have they would have a lot of different types of music. It would be gospel, blues. Is it so, lying in your bed at night, Stevie, yeah, with the little transistor radio? Yeah, you got it. Every musician has <laughs> It's not true. Hey, it's true though. It's true. It's something to do. When did you first lay your hands on the guitar and, and could you do anything with it right away? Uh, nobody can do something with it right away, I don't think. Besides maybe my brother. <laughs> he didn't seem to have learned. He just seemed to start playing. I was about seven I guess, when I first started picking up his guitars that he was saying to leave alone, he was doing it on purpose. And it hurts your fingers the first time you pick it up, right? Sometimes. <laughs> you know, a lot of people it does. It's, it's something that doesn't either bothers you or doesn't bother you. You keep going. Do you remember the first tune you learned how to play? And if so, I'm going to ask you to play it. Do you remember what uh, you used to do? The first thing I tried to learn was, you know... And blues, but, but you were trying. You were trying. Yeah, I was doing my best. <laughs> you are a blues musician, and you don't take that title lightly. And yet, I think that term is very misunderstood, isn't it? Yes, it's it's really the blues are music that soothes, and they've they've been responsible for a lot of other type of music to be here in the first place. Rock and roll is just a baby of the blues. So is jazz. Is it's it possible? Is it possible that a pop tune can become a blues tune just through uh, through coloring it? Sure, the way you play. And, and uh, it's, it's like you said earlier, it's... Um, blues, you don't write them down on paper, you write the notes down to a song. But the, the tones and the way you feel them is the, is the music itself. Can you show me, can you take a pop tune, maybe anything that's running around in your head, <laughs> show me how to play it straight and then show me how you put feel into it? Well... <laughs> To be honest, I'd, I like to play with feeling every time I play. <laughs> okay, show me how you put feeling into a note. Well, it depends. It depends on how you want to do it. You can like a... Or you can sting it, you know. gentle a little more wistful yeah. really so many so much human emotion do you feel that emotion when you're playing the emotion that those notes suggest to me if i didn't i shouldn't be there exactly yeah. when did you start to feel it though because when you're a kid it's just you don't have grown-up emotions I, well you feel, you feel it first and then you learn how to do it yeah. it takes a whole lifetime to do these things how much did you practice you hear about eric clapton for example locking himself up for a whole year and not going out and just practicing well, I didn't time it, you know, I just, I just do it every day, I play, you know, I just play, because it's, it's a beautiful instrument, it's a beautiful woman. And that's, you're not kidding, are you? No. I mean, someone told me that your wife is third in line in your life, right? <laughs> Tell me about well, that. It's, no, it's, she's, she's right up there. <laughs> it's just that, you know, my first wife is right there. Uh, it's off camera. <laughs> it's a guitar, if a beautiful I get guitar it, line can we, can we get that, so I can show them what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Gerald, you bring a, that up to us. She's this looks like it has seen the war, Stevie. It has, but that's part of life, you know, sometimes. How she's old a, is this guitar? It's a 59. She's, uh, she's been played. <laughs> she does... You have worn the varnish off every bit of that guitar. Well, there's, there's wood worn off, too. <laughs> you know, she's got some scars, but... So this is your, you call it sort of half-jokingly, first wife. Yes, and this is, well, it's not joking at all. 
But this is, and see, even Mickey Mantle endorsed it, you know? <laughs> Native, felt, well, he's a fellow Texan now, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was the guitar on the, that, yeah, I played, that I played when they did the Star Spangled Banner. This is the one. And this guitar is a little newer, but it's, uh, here, it's fast. Yes, but it's, uh, she's beautiful. She's made in part by Renee Martinez and Charlie Wirtz. Uh, see? Yeah, Charlie's your mechanic. He works on no, no, Renee. Renee. Renee is Charlie, Charlie was, Martinez. Charlie was, was the other half. Yeah. <laughs> He's still around. He just had to move on. So, you know. Your career has been pretty exciting the last three years. Yes, it has. It's Before that, time. you might have... Did Were you ambitious? Or did, well, whatever that means. Um, I was trying. Did you think that Stevie Ray Vaughan would be headlining at the Montreux Jazz Festival, that you'd be headlining at the Sydney Opera House or at Carnegie Hall? No, but I sure was hoping. You know? You were discovered. By my parents. <laughs> somebody I said out. Somebody I popped out and my parents went, there he is. Somebody said it was Mick Jagger. Am I well, wrong? Well, I was a little older then, you know. So you were already made. <laughs> you know, I'm me. Why don't you show me a little bit more about what you can do with this? Because yeah. uh, we could talk all day, but I'd love to hear you play. All right. <laughs> It's a thing to Charlie Works. Who is someone He's who meant Charlie. a lot to you? Yes, he, uh, he was um, one of the best people I've ever met in my life. He helped you and with your guitars? Yes, and with your heart, too. You know, he's a, he was a big man. You have a lot of people who care about you. I can tell that with the kind and of people that I travel I about a lot of people. You know, it, com it comes and goes, you know. How many albums out now? Three. And, and a fourth coming well, out? Well, actually, it's, there's two out now. A third to be out this week. And Everywhere in Canada you go, it seems that you're playing. You're up here a lot. You like it here. Yeah. And we, sure. we like watching you play. One final question, and I hope it won't offend you. You're from Texas. Right. Years ago, they used to be the fastest guns in the West. Yeah. Now, is it the fastest guitar in the West? Are you the, are you the toughest guitar slinger around? Oh, I just, if somebody wants to battle, I do it every once in a while. <laughs> Mostly you just love to play. Yeah. Well, listen, we love to listen to you. All right. We're about to, uh, to go to a commercial here, but why don't you play us out? Just whatever right. you feel about being in this studio and being on Lifetime. Thanks All for right. joining us. All right. Stevie man. Ray Vaughan. It's a thing called Say What Soul to Soul. All right. <laughs> you rock and roll fans who have never heard Stevie Ray Vaughan play with such restraint, be advised that in the studio, yes, he was loud. Everyone here will attest to that. Also, a bit of trivia. The wah-wah pedal that Stevie used, that's the pedal that makes the wah-wah sound that's attached to his guitar, actually belonged to the great Jimi Hendrix, arguably the greatest electric guitarist who ever lived.